thank you so much for coming. This is the third annual commemoration of the birthday party of Elbridge Gary. I'm delighted to be here uh, on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Maryland, Common Cause Maryland, and the National Council of Jewish Women Annapolis section, who together make up the coalition called Tame the Gerrymander. We have been working for many years to improve the redistricting process here in Maryland, and we have uh, sponsored this event for the last three years in order to highlight the fact that we still have a long ways to go on redistricting reform. So our first speaker today I'm delighted to introduce is Phil Andrews, who served on the Montgomery County Council for 16 years. It was under his leadership that Montgomery County adopted the first local campaign public finance law in uh, Maryland, which will allow candidates for county executive and county council to seek public funding and the support of small donors instead of big money, which was a great accomplishment. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, I also uh, want to point out that Phil Andrews was formerly the executive director of Common Cause Maryland, and he's been a longtime advocate for good government and districting reform. Thank you, Nancy. It's nice to see everybody this morning. I want to thank the League of Women Voters and Common Cause Maryland and the National Council of Jewish Women for sponsoring this event and for being so persistent as you have to be to work for redistricting reform, which is a marathon, not a sprint, especially since the problem has been going on now for more than 200 years. Uh, Elbridge Jerry was mentioned, and Elbridge Jerry, uh, for which, uh, who's the namesake of the term gerrymandering, was governor of Massachusetts uh, in the early 1800s, and he signed a map that uh, became known as the example of gerrymandering. Uh, but I have to say that the map that he signed back in 1812 uh, was much uh, less disjointed and much more compact than the maps that we see today. Uh, Elbridge Jerry was an amateur at gerrymandering compared to Maryland state officials and, sta and state officials across the nation. Uh, so we have this perverse perfection of gerrymandering that has occurred uh, with the use of technology. It's become much easier to draw maps and the Congressional District 3 map, which is the one that uh, is uh, being held up right now, uh, is an example of the worst of the worst. This map, if you can call it that, this district uh, runs from Towson to Annapolis to uh, Olney in the west, but excludes most of the area in between. And it looks like blood spatter from a crime scene more than anything else. Uh, it's a disgrace. And several other Maryland's congressional maps are almost as bad. So uh, we have to address this because what it does is split communities apart. It's an intentional effort to disempower voters. And that way, it's a political assault by elected officials on their own constituents. And voters have every right to be furious that this is being done to them and not for them. Now, what's the answer? Well, some states have shown the way. Arizona and California, uh, voters set up independent redistricting commissions. They have the power of the initiatives. So they will put it on the ballot directly. We don't have that in Maryland, so we're going to have to persuade the General Assembly to change the law, to set up an independent commission, uh, and or to have standards that are required for legislators to follow uh, that are compactness standards. Now, with regard to Maryland's legislative districts, they have to be compact, but there are no such standards for congressional districts, and that's why these districts can look like that. Um, Governor Hogan has talked about the importance of addressing this issue. He mentioned that in his State of the State speech, and uh, we hope, uh, we're hope delighted to hear that the governor's uh, first round of chemotherapy went really well and we all wish him the best and we hope that he will grab the mantle of this issue because it is a historic opportunity for uh, this state and Governor Hogan has that historic opportunity to lead the way for real reform of gerrymandering to replace this to put the public interest before any political party's interest and that is what we need the governor to lead on uh, and what we need the legislature to act on. And so everyone should contact uh, their officials and insist that they be part of the solution on this issue because we need them to put the public interest before any party's interest. And that's not too much to ask, and it's what we should expect of all of our elected officials. This is truly a bipartisan uh, problem 
and uh, it, we need a bipartisan solution to this. So I thank uh, the League, I thank Common Cause, and thank the National Council of Jewish Women for leading the way on this. And there are many other organizations and people that are interested in this issue across the state. And that's what we uh, have found. And with the Supreme Court's recent decision on uh, the Arizona case, we know that independent commissions are constitutional. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. We appreciate your hard and long years of effort on this as well. Um, he, Phil Anders pointed out the third congressional district. When we get to the fun part of this, the cake eating time, you will see that that is the decoration on the top of the cake. And speaking of cake, it's my special pleasure to introduce Ralph Watkins from the League of Women Voters. And yes, the League does have male members. And he's going to uh, share a little with you. Thank you, Nancy. I just wanted to make uh, one little point about Albert's Jerry was actually a great patriot. He uh, enlisted in the cause of independence early. He was nearly arrested on the night that they got uh, Paul Revere. But unfortunately, we remember him for the one bad thing he did, which was to sign off on a uh, partisan map. And so the, the message of that is don't ruin your reputation. Uh, we would, that would be the message we'd like to give to our General Assembly. Don't ruin your reputation by manipulating the voters uh, stand for sound democratic principles. Now, I was asked uh, <clears throat> to prepare a recipe for gerrymander cake. And with the help of my sous chef, uh, we're going to uh, give that recipe to you so you'll all be prepared to bake your very own cake tomorrow. Gerrymander cake, an old Maryland favorite. First ingredient, one census map. Four cups of Democratic voters. Four cups of Republican voters. Two cups of unaffiliated voters. Uh, regional adjustments are possible. In a Republican-dominated state, you can use up to five firmly packed cups of Democrats. In a Democratic state, use up to five firmly packed cups of Republicans. Uh, there, there's also the alternative of uh, spreading the uh, minority party so thinly that they don't actually affect the flavor of any of the slices. This is an option. Two eggs, well beaten. One teaspoon of baking powder or a quarter teaspoon of political ambition may be substituted. Our experience has shown a little goes a long way. One half cup melted shortening. Uh, short changing of incumbents may be substituted, but your cake may become bitter. A half cup milk, one teaspoon artificial vanilla or other artificial flavoring. Even artificial reform has been used. Beat firmly until public interest subsides. Then add one map of election returns. Pour the beaten mixture into a baking dish carefully marked to show the locations of the homes of incumbent office holders. Bake in a closed room until immediately before the legislative session or until an opinion poll can be inserted and removed cleanly. Uh, for most reliable results, the room should be filled with loyal party leaders adding independent members may produce unpredictable results. Um, caution, do not expose to sunlight while baking. This may ruin your cake. Refrigerate for at least four hours if your party has only recently gained the majority. In this situation, gerrymander cake, like revenge, is a dish best served cold cut into irregular slices. Our experience in Maryland is that it will serve 8 million voters poorly. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. And if you didn't get one, we have copies of that recipe for you, and it will also be on the Common Cause Maryland website as well as the League of Women Voters website so that we may all enjoy gerrymander cake. Um, before we go on to close, I'd like to introduce Noel. I know I'm going to stop. Isama. What? Isama from Common Cause Maryland. 
you want to say a couple words? Thank you, everybody. Uh, I, I had a piece of the gerrymander cake. It tastes terrible. So, <laughs> but great job, Ralph. And I want to thank the League and the National Council of Jewish Women for helping us in the Tame the Gerrymander Coalition and everyone involved. And a few people have wondered and asked me, why are we having a birthday for something that we don't want anymore in our democracy? And in fact, this is actually to commemorate, uh, to commemorate the fact that, we, uh, that our democracy is being undermined. And we're bringing people here today to show that there's actually a positive force to try and change our democracy in our state to make it better. Uh, a fundamental concept of democracy in America, of, or, or even America in general, is the concept of fair play. Uh, fair play gives people the idea or the chance to think that they, anybody has a chance to succeed in our politics, succeed in our country. But what Derry Manning does is fundamentally undermine that. And what we are here today to do is to stand and shout clearly and shout loudly, no. No more gerrymandering. No more unfair distortion of our democracy and our politics in this state. Fair play will come back to Maryland with the work that the Tame the Gerrymander Coalition is doing, uh, with hopefully with the work that the governor will be doing, and hopefully with all the work that you're doing as citizens. I encourage everybody here to join us in our movement to make Maryland a more dem democratic, small d, democratic state, uh, to make it more fair, to make it more open, to, make, to bring people back into our politics, to bring communities back into our politics, and to make sure that, in Maryland at least, that we can be a shining light for how our democracy and how our country should be. So I want to thank everybody here today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And please have a slice of our real cake. It tastes wonderful. And uh, have a nice day. Thanks, Noel. So before we go on to um, our next speaker, I just wanted to remind all of you that on next Wednesday, that's July 23rd, we'll be having an online webinar where you can find out what our next steps in, Jerry, in uh, redistricting reform are and how you can help. So all you need to do is go to either the lwvmd.org website or the Common Cause website and sign up and then you'll get the information on how to participate in this webinar. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, we would love to have more people get engaged. And to close uh, this morning, Carol Ann Hecht from the National Council of Jewish Women Annapolis section is going to talk. Good morning. You've heard it all. I, you can hear me, can't you? Um, gerrymandering has been going on for a long time. Both parties do it, and we all know it's wrong. Our other speakers have explained to you how and why it is wrong, uh, and the history of Elbridge Gerry, or Jerry, to uh, follow up on his on El on Jerry's birthday. I just want to say that we have come to bury gerrymandering, not to praise it. I want to invite you all to have a real, and I need to apologize to Shakespeare. Um, we invite you all to have a wonderful piece of our gerrymander cake, some ice cream to go with it. The politicians have been serving you gerrymander cake for a long time. Have some of ours, help us make change, sign the petitions, have house parties, Talk to your neighbors and friends about the need for reform in this state. And what do we want to do? We want to tame the gerrymander. Yeah. Can you all say that for me? Tame, tame the, the gerrymander. gerrymander. One more time and tame I will the gerrymander. <laughs> Thank you very much. You may have some ice cream and cake. Yeah. Yeah, uh, during the, the uh, well, during the campaign last year, we stopped through the gerrymander meander process because I live in that district along with probably half of the population. See, I'm somewhere in that bad intestines or whatever that is. Um, I mean, it's 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 a terrible situation. Uh, it's basically undemocratic. That's the word. Is that a word? Yeah. Um, and it this is really just a good government issue. I think that brings a lot of people together that may not agree on a lot of subjects, but we can agree on this, that it, it is intended to decrease the vote of certain people, decrease the say of some people. And it's done just to protect special interests and protect certain politicians without giving people real say in government. I mean, it doesn't make any sense 
Baltimore County and parts of Baltimore City do not have anything in common other than being Marylanders with Montgomery County. And they take, I guess, a roadway or maybe a bike path through Howard County to get there. And they look at this. I mean, what about all these folks here? We might as well all be in this, this district. Let's just make it one district. Make it at large, the way they've done this. So um, with that said, I appreciate what people are doing and coming out to contest what, what really is you know, a terrible situation, and we should not allow that to stand. Uh, should I say, for shame, those who drew this map. For shame. Came the gerrymander. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.